Uh, one of the interesting questions that systems have diverged in the past is what actually happens on a TLB miss. Okay, so when you have a TLB miss, there's some someone that needs to walk through the page table uh, to figure out what the translation is. Uh, this can be done either in hardware or software. Okay, so you can either trap into a function in the operating system that's going to walk through the page table, or you can have a hardware controller that sits there, uh, knows the page table format, and indexes into different pointers to go fetch uh, the translation. And x86 generally chose to go the hardware route. Spark from Sun, uh, which is Oracle now, uses a combination of hardware and software. And if the page table entry is valid, that is the page is present in memory, but no TLB entry, that leads to a read pull. If the page table entry itself is marked as invalid, that means the page is on the disk. And this causes what's known as a major page fault, and the kernel does need to be involved at this point. So to reiterate, there are two steps when you, there are two ways in which you can walk the page table. You can either use hardware or software, okay? We'll look at the trade-offs in a second. If once the walker starts walking the page table, you get to an entry. If the page table entry is valid, then the page is present in memory. You only had a TLB miss, so you refill the TLB and you're good to go. If the page table entry itself is marked as invalid, then the page is on the disk. This causes a page fault, and the kernel has to be involved to get the page, to copy over the page from the disk to memory for, to start off with. So if you look at the Y hardware, for one, higher performance, so performance is the reason why you have TLB walks in hardware. Uh, the processor CPU uh, is free to do other things. Uh, so, you know, you, when you're walking the page table, you could have other useful instructions running on the CPU at the same time. Uh, this is quite important in out-of-order processors. Um, it obviously has higher performance. And these are all the pluses. If you look at the negatives of a hardware page table, it kind of um, fixes uh, the PTE organization. So you can only use the data structure that the hardware understands, right? Because the controller is in hardware. So the negative uh, for hardware is a fixed uh, page table design. Um, and the positives is just higher performance and freeing up the processor to do other more useful things. So let's take a quick look at the, or try to quantify uh, with a simple equation what the average access time of TLBs could be. So let's say a TLB lookup time is sigma, your memory access time is M. If every page, if the page table needs a single access, so let's just assume that uh, there are no multi-level page tables and there is no cache. Uh, that is, there is no hardware cache for the data itself. So there, we have a TLB, and then all the other accesses go to memory. There is no hardware cache, okay? So let's say TLB hit uh, is eta, then the effective access time is given by uh, this equation, where it is the number of hits uh, multiplied by the average lookup time, and then it's the number of misses uh, multiplied by the average miss time. Okay, so that's what we calculate in this case. And it's directly proportional to how many data accesses you actually make, in this case, M. TLB entries also have valid and dirty bits, similar to your page table entry. So they not only cache the translation itself, but they also uh, cache the metadata. Valid bit of zero means it's a TLB miss, that is, TLB entry does not exist. Uh, the dirty bit has a slightly different meaning. It corresponds to the fact that the page table entry may have been changed or has been changed and that the page table in its memory is out of date with the TLB which is caching the most up-to-date entry. So in such cases, uh, the entry from the page TLB has to be flushed from the page table uh, in order to uh, uh, keep the 